Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and I would like to thank the Minister for standing and taking a call on this, because it is good to engage on the substance of what we are debating. However, I must say that um, I found um, the statements of the Minister rather confusing, if I'm honest, because we're being told um, on one hand that this is going to take four to five years and that the Minister doesn't want quick fixes and that she's going slowly and carefully um, and she'll make sure that the changes um, will be in the best interests of the children. And yet, we are passing legislation without the content and the policy work having been done. Now, that seems to me as if, actually, that's a process going ahead of itself and actually is being rushed. And I would um, challenge the minister to actually question herself on that point. And I also would say, and when the response to... Um, that we can't raise the youth justice age because there's no capacity to deal with the numbers in the system at the moment. There's when there's the ability to phase it in through this legislation, I would ask the minister to bring us an SOP to actually phase in that, that aspect of it. If it's not the capacity right now, then let's not rush through this legislation that's going to create um, a mixed messages and confusion within the system, actually let's phase that in in a proper time frame so we can do it all at once in a way that is consistent and does honour to the, the wholeness of those young people. Um, and I also, I really, I, I do take exception with the Minister um, giving us examples about what might happen from the delegated powers. And acknowledge as first point around that is that this legislation, as it is written at the moment, enables wholesale delegation of what are currently child, youth and family, social worker and police powers. And they could be to anyone and any of a large number of powers, including the uplifting of children and search of houses. They are very, very significant powers. And the minister has told us that, well, yes, that work hasn't been done um, yet, but that's OK. Some of the issues, we just should trust her, um, despite the fact that the State Services Act guidance tells us that there should not be, legislation should not enable wholesale delegation of powers. But we should trust her because there's the possibility that iwi may be able to take on these roles. So those of us who are concerned that 60% of children in care currently are tamariki Māori, which I would, I, I would challenge anyone in the House to suggest that that does not show and institutional racism exists within our system at the moment, that, that okay, so we will enable iwi to be able to work with Fano. And to me, I'm, I'm actually, I, I'm okay with that. But what we've seen in the consultation to lead us to this legislation was that the expert advisory group consulted and they list that they consulted with 200 people the only identifiable people in that list from iwi or from even from Māori social services, there were nine. Nine out of 200. So tell me how that is in any way going to lead to a treaty-based solution. You throw out there that this will enable iwi to be able to care for whānau when there is so much deep concern that tamariki Māori are being taken and severed from their whakapapa and their families. And you throw out there that this will enable iwi to be able to work with those whānau when there has been no decent consultation. There is no, not even a sniff of partnership in the process to this point. I think that is dishonest. And I will not accept that. And the Green Party does not accept that we should be passing legislation without any specificity on the promise of something that is not matched by evidence or practice up to this point.
That is frankly unacceptable. Um, 